the greatest mind in the Commonwealth has arrived. Smart, cunning, and ruthless, the Mastermind is an incredible woman who will let nothing stand in her way. If you have yet to see the different builds leading up to this one, then I highly recommend you watch them first, in order to truly understand who this character is. I'll leave links in the description below with the most important build backstories to watch. The Mastermind has Strength 3, Perception 2, Endurance 1, Charisma 1, Intelligence 11, Agility 10, and Luck 1. Although we will be using Unarmed, we don't need a high base stat in Strength, so we can keep it at 3 purely for perks. We will mainly be using that with our Unarmed weapon, so we don't really need a high Perception stat as our hit chance will either be 95% or 0. Endurance is lowered to 1. This does make us more vulnerable, but the character is designed to be sneaky, so we should be able to avoid too many direct confrontations. Charisma is also bottomed out at 1. We really don't need it at all for this build. This character has an intelligence of 11. In order to get this as a base stat, you first need to set Intelligence to 10, and then when you go to pick up a special book from Sean's old room, first drink a beer to lower Intelligence by a point. This will let you put the bonus point into Intelligence, and once the beer wears off, you will then have a base of 11 Intelligence, which will then raise to 12 once you have the bobblehead. Agility is our second highest stat at 10. This makes the character both incredibly stealthy and very fast on her feet. Finally, Luck is our last dump stat, sitting at 1. The Mastermind doesn't rely on Luck to achieve her goals, and honestly, the points were just better spent elsewhere. The essential perks for this build are Iron Fist, Science, Armorer, Blitz, and Ninja. Iron Fist is our main damage dealing perk for this character. The Mastermind is a talented martial artist, who gains pleasure out of dealing with her enemies up close and personal. Science and Armourer are going to be our modding perks, letting us make all our gear as advanced as possible, and also helping us improve energy weapons to their maximum potential. Blitz is going to help us use Unarmed more effectively. This perk gives us additional range with our unarmed attacks in VATS, meaning we don't have to get as close to enemies before attacking them. The perk also means we deal additional damage at range, and it will sometimes make us teleport to our targets. I like to view this as an advanced piece of tech that the Mastermind has found, which allows her to teleport short distances. Lastly in the essential category, we have Ninja. Although it doesn't mention unarmed in the perk description, this perk increases the sneak attack multiplier with unarmed to 4.5 times instead of a standard 3 times multiplier. Although not anywhere near as good as the bonus from melee, it still helps this character to get plenty of one hit kills. The recommended perks I've included are Blacksmith, Awareness, Black Widow, Gunslinger, and Scrapper. Blacksmith lets us mod out our unarmed weapons to their maximum potential, and will also help with our power armor modding. If it wasn't for the power armor modding, I'd say it isn't really needed, so feel free to invest in it a little later on. Awareness lets us scan our enemies to spot their weaknesses. This will help you work out what will be the best strategy to employ against them, based off of their level and resistances. I advise going into VATS as a regular basis to check on all your different enemies so that you never rush blindly into a fight. The Black Widow perk is great, as the majority of enemies in Fallout are male. This means the character gets a nice damage boost against a large number of enemies. It also helps with persuasion attempts, and helps to make up for the low charisma. Gunslinger is going to give us a second weapon type to deal damage with. The Mastermind isn't a huge fan of using guns, but carrying a couple of pistols around gives us a ranged way to deal with enemies, and adds some variety to the build. Focus on dealing with your enemies up close, but if you have to, then swap over to your pistols. The Scrapper perk helps out with modding our power armor, and just making it easier to get supplies. This is a great perk to get if you want to speed up the pace of a game, and not waste too much time hunting down all the components you need. The role playing perks are Hacker, Robotics Expert, Nuclear Physicist, and Nerd Rage. All of these perks help to exemplify just how intelligent the Mastermind is. Hacker lets us get access to more locations and loot, Robotics Expert lets us build amazing robots and also hack them, giving us some extra options when fighting automatrons, Nuclear Physicist shows her aptitude as a scientist, and also makes using VATS whilst in power armor far more efficient. Lastly, Nerd Rage shows the more dangerous side of the Mastermind. She may wish to think herself as cold and calculating, but deep down, fire burns in her heart. 
and when she gets angry, you do not want to cross her. If you've seen my other Fallout builds, then you probably already know who the Mastermind is. Creator of the Death Squad, scientist behind the West Tech experiments, and manipulator of the Great War, this one woman has been responsible for some of the worst atrocities that the world has seen. The Mastermind's mother died in childbirth, and her father abandoned her at an orphanage when she was still a baby, so she never knew who her parents were. Despite this harsh start to life, she managed to do exceptionally well for herself, spending all of her time learning anything she possibly could, and dedicating every moment to improving herself. Although this may seem like she was taking a noble path in life, this wasn't quite the case. The other children in the orphanage were always scared of her, and none of the staff ever knew why. The other children would have burn marks on their temples, and bruises all over them, but none of them ever said how they had happened, always claiming that they had just hurt themselves while playing. In reality, the Mastermind had been conducting experiments on them, and training herself to fight, using those she lived with as punching bags, simply to give herself a slight edge. As the years went by, the children she lived with were either adopted, or ran away from the orphanage, and rumours started to spread about the Mastermind. Fearing that all she had done would soon be discovered, she fled the building during the night, leaving behind everyone who knew who she was. On the night that she left, a fire consumed the orphanage, burning the building to the ground, and killing over half of those living inside. The cause of the fire was never found, and the Mastermind was assumed to have died in the blaze, being one of the many charred corpses that littered the area. In actuality, she had travelled far away and began living alone, finding an abandoned house that she decided to use as a residence for the next few years. After she had settled into her new home, she found herself a school to enrol within. A few forged documents were all that it took for her to get a place in the school with no questions asked. On her first day, she had a group of bullies attempt to intimidate her. She ignored their words at first, but as soon as one laid her hand on her, she was outraged. These people had no idea how powerful she was, and thought that they could dominate her with a show of force, but she soon showed them just how wrong they were. She struck the bully in the neck, just above his Adam's apple, pushing his larynx back and narrowing his windpipe from the force of a blow. She then calmly uttered forth the words, Do you want your friend to live? to the other bullies, revelling in the looks of terror that were painted across their faces. One of them was smart enough to nod his head, and she landed a swift blow to the back of a choking bully's neck, causing him to cough and spit, gasping for air as tears flowed down his face. She turned away from her bullies, and saw a young man standing still, watching her with mouth agape. She smiled at him, seeing someone who she could use to serve her own purpose. Over the next year, she learnt a lot about the man. He was incredibly tough and strong, and seemed absolutely infatuated with her. As the year began to end, she had formulated a plan to capitalise on these qualities, telling the man that she was going to sign up for the army. She knew that he would enlist with her, fearing for her safety, and this would give her the chance she needed to mould him into her own personal soldier. Joining the military was just the first step in her master plan, and her time as a foot soldier let her start building up contacts in the military, and letting her observe what the soldiers were actually doing on the battlefield. With her incredible grasp of military tactics, and the skills her friend had as a soldier, she was able to perfectly tailor the outcome of every battle to suit her own needs, killing off those who may later become a problem, and strengthening the loyalty others felt towards her. After a couple of years, she had set enough wheels in motion, and transferred herself to the legal side of the army. This would put her out of direct harm's way, and also let her manipulate events in the background. Knowing that her plans would still put her in some danger though, she made sure to get her friend assigned to guard duty where she was stationed, forging documents to get him exactly where he was needed. In truth, there were others she could have brought to the base that would have served the purpose just as well, but the mastermind had started to develop feelings for the young man. She would never admit it, but having been the only person that had ever truly cared for her, had given him a place in her heart that nobody else would ever obtain. The mastermind viewed emotion as weakness though, so ignored the feeling she had for him, and focused on furthering her own goals. From her new position, she began looking for individuals to make up her own personal hit squad. She created a computer error to assign a talented but arrogant sniper to a field role, where he could then be bartered with to work for her, let a woman with severe mental problems and a deep desire to see blood loose, just to get her to kill any enemy she had, 
and perform countless other deeds just to get enough of the right people together into one squad to serve her purpose. For the recruitment of this squad, she had used a high-ranking military officer and appealed to a sense of patriotism to not only form the squad, but to also convince them to complete missions that no person in their right mind would go through with. These included assassinations of American citizens, theft of valuable technology from all over the world, and even killing fellow soldiers who were a risk to her plans, or who were just in the wrong place. It wasn't long before she decided to complete the squad by putting her friend in charge of them. For the first time in her life, she asked someone else for help, and managed to get him to agree to leave the squad on a mission. She didn't tell him anything about the squad, fearing what his reaction would be, and as soon as they were deployed, she waited anxiously for his return, hoping with all of her heart that she could convince him to stay with the squad, and to stay with her. Instead, when he returned, he was horrified at what had taken place, and begged her to turn the squad over to the authorities. She tried to convince him to leave the squad, and offered him a place at her side forever, but it was to no avail. He turned away from her forever, and would never speak to her again. He was now the one person in the world who could stop her, and she knew that the logical thing for her to do would be to have him killed, but she couldn't do it. She loved him, even after he had turned away from her, and she never wanted harm to come to him, or to hurt him any more than she already had. It took her time to recover from him leaving, but eventually she returned to her plans, starting with experiments on soldiers to create a new breed of super soldiers to fight for her. To this extent, she also began experimenting with cybernetics, adding computer chips to the minds of soldiers to force them to serve her with no real control for themselves. She was even able to create a cyborg of her own likeness to serve as a body double, helping her manipulate more events and turn more people to her side. Too late though, she realises that the war has taken a dark turn. She foresees nuclear annihilation, and isn't fully prepared for it. Her army won't be ready in time, and she has to change her plan to survival instead of domination. She lets the kill squad fall apart, and sends off her cyborgs to live out normal lives, hoping that they will still be of use to her after the bombs fall. She sends her own personal cyborg to find the man she loved, and in time she manipulates events to get the two of them married. She lives her life vicariously through her creation, seeing what could have been if she had taken a different path. She sets events in order to ensure that he will be safe, and orders her creation to keep her love and his son safe, making certain that they will live through Armageddon by getting them a place in Vault 111, and making sure they live close enough to reach it in time. As her last act before she herself will enter the vault, she simulates a nuclear launch in both the American and Chinese computer systems causing both sides to start launching warheads at one another. As this takes place, she rushes herself to the vault, hiding away and replacing her double after the vault dwellers have entered cryosleep. The world may be over, but she knows that once she wakes up, she will get to live a life with the man she loved for all of her life. This character will side with and gather intel on all of the different factions, before finally siding with the Institute. She will gather up anything of value to her before betraying the other factions and destroying them. From within the ranks of the Institute, she can make plans to control all of the Commonwealth from the safety that their location provides. I'd also suggest joining the Nuka World Raiders and becoming Overseer of Vault 88. The Mastermind will treat the Raiders like her own personal army, and being Overseer will let her experiment on people to further her own goals. Build yourself the most powerful robots you possibly can to help you out in a variety of situations. I suggest only bringing these robots along when you really need to though, as I found that they will normally ruin your stealth and planning if not kept on a short leash. I also encourage you to try and get a few of the best companion perks, such as Deacon's perk Cloak and Dagger, which will help this build out significantly. I'd recommend not travelling around too long with them though, as the Mastermind doesn't want anyone getting too close to her of finding out who she really is. The main weapon for this build outside of power armour will be the Furious Power Fist. This is a great weapon, as normally we will be getting sneak attacks which should one hit a large number of enemies, but if it doesn't, the next hit will already be at increased damage, meaning few enemies will last more than a couple of punches. Inside of power armour you obviously won't be able to equip this weapon, but instead you can just mod out the arms with hydraulic braces to increase your unarmed damage. 
In addition to fighting unarmed, you will also want to carry around whatever powerful pistols you find on your travels. The Mastermind doesn't like using guns, but will resort to them if she has to, so focus on just carrying around a couple of really powerful ones with you. Although you don't have to go for any specific pistols, the Alien Blaster works quite well for this build, as the limited ammo doesn't matter so much when you're avoiding using ranged weaponry in the first place. The Mastermind will wear the Legend of Vault 88, the unique vault suit with the Ghoul Slayer's legendary effect. Make sure to improve this up to shielded lining as soon as you can to maximise its resistances. On top of this, you will wear heavy polymer combat armour on everything except for your head. Your helmet will be a synth-filled helmet, which gives the build a great aesthetic and helps the mastermind to keep an air of secrecy as to who she is. I'd recommend putting sleek on your legs in order to move faster while sneaking, and weighted on the arms to improve your effectiveness with unarmed. I'll leave the choice of mod on the chest piece up to you. In addition to this, you will want to make yourself the best suit of power armour you can possibly build. The specifics of this are entirely up to you, but I'd recommend a combination of T60 and X01. I personally had a full suit of Mark VI X01, but there are some great legendary T60 pieces that you may want to grab to further improve your suit. You are much more agile while out of power armour, so try not to rely on wearing the suit too often as this build isn't designed for open confrontation, and it's harder to utilise stealth when you're clunking around in a giant metal suit. The Mastermind relies on speed and cunning. Use your knowledge of the game to get an edge over your enemies. If you know the positioning of certain enemies, use this to get the drop on them. If an enemy is wearing metal armour, use energy weapons to capitalise on their low energy resistance. If you want some more examples on fighting smart, then I would highly recommend the video that Get Good Guy uploaded called Be Exceptional. It's based in Battlefield, but pretty much all of the points he makes can be transferred to Fallout 4 or just about any other shooter out there. For roleplaying, try to act kind to most people when first meeting them, but constantly plan out how you're going to manipulate them to serve your own needs. The Mastermind is a ruthless genius who doesn't care about anyone else in the wastes, so leave behind any morals you had when playing as her. I hope that all of you enjoyed this character that I created in Fallout. Obviously she is a significant part in the overlaying story that has been woven through most of my Fallout builds, so I highly encourage watching the ones in the description if you had no idea what I was talking about for half of this video. If you enjoyed this video though, then make sure to give it a like, and subscribe if you've just found the channel. I've been putting a hell of a lot of work into my builds recently and I sincerely hope they're turning out well for all of you. As always, thanks for watching, and stick around for more great content.